The following program is a paid presentation. The views and or opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KWAM. Welcome to the Variety Hour on The Voice. This is the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, good morning, everybody. I am your host, Dean Harris. I'm with Crest Core Realty. We are happy that you are with us today. Uh, we're back from a few weeks uh, all for the holidays, so if you guys have missed us, I've gotten a few calls and some text over the past couple of weeks, so we are... Uh, took a little time off for the holidays, but we're now back at it. So we're, we're happy that you joined us this morning. So thank you for tuning in at AM 990 Memphis 107.9 FM. Or if some of you are tuning in online, you can uh, catch us out there, www.kwam990.com. The Memphis Real Estate Hour, guys, concentrates on investing in Memphis real estate. We'll focus on a little bit of our residential market as well. And uh, from time to time, we'll have local and national vendor partners of ours. Uh, on the show to share some of their knowledge on uh, how to become an investor in Memphis or how to become a better investor in Memphis. So um, we remind you, too, every single show that I am an investor. So if you have that old home that you need to sell quickly or if you know someone that has a home that needs to sell quickly, call me or text me, 901-619-6170. We'll get you a cash offer on that home. I don't particularly care what the condition is. Where it is, what it is, or what it looks like, uh, we can definitely find a buyer for it. Uh, Facebook Live, guys, we're on Facebook Live this morning, so good morning to all of our listeners uh, that are tuning in with us on Facebook. We've been able to reach a much wider audience with, uh, with the Facebook Live. A lot of my national investors really appreciate that. You can go to the show's Facebook page, the Memphis Real Estate Hour, and you can see all of the past uh, Memphis Real Estate Hour uh, radio shows, videos we've got on there, and we list kind of the topics, so you can go back and kind of listen to that library as you, pe as you please. Um, today on the show, I'm going to have the investment of the week. I've got two great homes that I'm going to give you probably at about 925, 930, and then Dan Butler's in the studio with me again this morning, and we're going to be talking about uh, what we saw in 2017, uh, biggest lessons that we learned. Um, we're going to talk about some goals for 2018. Uh, and then kind of our local market, what we're seeing. So let's dive right into it, Dan. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? Glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, I feel this is, that was the longest stretch we'd gone without a live show know. since I started it. So it is, uh, it's good to get Should back in here. be refreshed and yeah. energized. Energized for 2018. <laughs> That's, right. That's exactly right. So look, we're, we're going to talk about a, a little 2017 kind of recap, um, what we what we saw, what we learned. Um you know, just to just to kind of set this up a little bit, a big year really in in not just our business, but in in investing That's in Memphis. Cool. Period. Yeah. I mean, I I don't I've, I've been in this a good a good while. You've been actually in, investing a little bit longer than I have, so um, it, it it changed in a lot of ways. Um, it seemed like it got really fast. It seemed like the pace of everything pace, yeah. moved up to a whole new level. That's right. Um, I started doing investing real estate with you back in 12, 11 or 12. Yeah. And we were, we were, it was quick and it was, it was moving and we could sell houses, but man, I, I've never, I've never seen the pace that we were at in 2017 like we are now. I think it's all from social media. What do you think? It has to be. I say all. I mean, a big driver. Big driver you of know. the pace. The pace, yeah. Because it's everything instant. happens so quick on, you know, Facebook. I've, I've sold several homes in 2017 off of Facebook alone. Yeah. Um, wholesalers uh, putting their stuff on They're Facebook. Constant. They're constant. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that is their bread and butter yeah. is to get their word out there on social media. So um, what are some of the things, lessons you think we've learned in 2017, some of the stuff that – Either we won't do again or we will do again. Lessons can be good, I guess. You can yeah. learn a good lesson. <laughs> good lesson. That's right. I think, I mean, man, I learned a ton. And, and it's funny as we were working on this show, it's like you don't want to you don't want to really talk about all the things you accomplished. 
Right. You know what I mean? Because you're right. now you're looking at 2018. What do you got to do? You know what I mean? So I think for me, it's more about what did we learn that we can carry forward. That's right. Kinda how I'm trying to look at it. Don't, sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What can you take from 2017, you know, and even 16, and apply it to what we're doing this year? Which we've. I mean, like, you know, personally with our, our own company, we're taking 2017 as an enormous stepping stone into some big stuff for us. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, that was the, the, the building block year, right? Putting I think thing, so. Putting the pl blocks in place to take it to another level. So that's, right. you know, but I think one of the things I learned was just, you know, uh, you know, just start uh, always looking forward. You know, I think that's, I can't tell you how many people I met over the last year that a ton of them just always want to complain or talk about what happened this morning, what happened yesterday, what happened last month. Mm -hmm. And what I found is the more you hear that, the more you realize you're holding yourself back. You know what I mean? Like, because you can't, if you're focusing on what happened yesterday or in the past, you can't be thinking, you can't, your brain won't allow you to think about what's happening you're spending in, time on the negative yeah you're spending time on the negative so it drains you number one mm -hmm. and number two there's your brain doesn't have the ability to look at forward and backwards Does that make sense it does you can talk it out loud but, right. but your actions and your motions won't be moving yeah. forward you're, you'll still be concentrating on something bad that happened in 17 or something bad that happened last month or whatever it may be and it's funny that so i guess one of my key learnings was just some daily reminders to to not do that Every morning. Every morning. Stay focused. Stay focused. Look at what's today, what's next month, this quarter, and not worry about, man, that ice storm was a killer last week. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I came home and, and had a two of two out of a ten day, you know, on Thursday, Friday, just because yeah. how bad it was with all the pipes burst. And, you know. You, you gave, we just talked about this right before we came on the air, but we had a circumstance in our office where some stuff got deleted and, and things were gone. and. My our operations supervisor yeah. Randall was I mean he was worked up but he was right. red in the face and he was hot I mean and and he rightfully so but I I I even caught myself telling him hey it's over right it, I mean it's over there's yeah. not we can sit here and spend another twenty minutes on it and if you and I even said and if you want to let's do that well you know what Let, the, let's spend that twenty minutes and get it out get it out. Say what you so need what you to say. say or let, or let's do it. Get I fired say, up. Because one thing we can't do is go back. It was whatever you know. Whatever happened happened. happened we right. couldn't change it. Yep. So I literally gave him the message. I just said, "Hey man, let, let's talk for a minute, yep. and, and let's get it out, and let's try to figure it out." And we spent 20 minutes on it. And sure enough, yesterday he came back in the office. I didn't hear. We didn't hear a word about it. We're just moving it's on. It can be better than what it what it was before. It can be, yeah, because you you can do it yourself, and we'll we'll it, you know we'll, we'll make some corrections and right. things that we should have done, but. Yeah, no, he well, rebounded quick from it. I didn't hear anything about it yesterday, so I was proud of him for that. Well, it kind of leads me into one of my second bullets because you asked me when we, right before the show about did you read that this thread of emails? Yeah. And what I say? <laughs> no. no. You know why I said no? <laughs> because I saw it happened. I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. But, which leads me into my second key learning: we hired the right people to fix. To fix. Yeah. Right. No, we really did. You know what I mean? So yeah. I didn't even. You know, I know it was. Randall got worked up, and I know you got worked up with Sina for a minute to, yeah. to get through it, but, but we hired Randall and put him in the right spot to succeed. And he did. And he did. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I didn't even, I know that thing was a mile long, a thread. It's over with. I just, I was like, they'll fix it. That's, it's over that's with. That's how I did it. I, I, yeah. I just, I read it, what y'all said, put it in a folder, and moved on, and it was because, yeah. you know, our key, one of the key things for 2017 is, is hire the right people, put them in the right seats. and That's a perfect example. No, we weren't planning on even, I wouldn't plan on giving this example, but that, right. that worked, um, and with him, it's worked perfectly, because I didn't, yesterday we didn't discuss or dwell on it all we did was work on fixing it now randall's probably sitting there saying y'all don't realize how many hours i got into this oh he is right now he's <laughs> listening right now <laughs> getting him hot but <laughs> but the key thing he should know is that you and i trust him and yeah you know we spent all last year hiring the right people the right i mean how many people that new hires do we hire last year in key spots that we can now sit back and say all right you got it that's you know? right i mean you brought in to run the brokerage yep. you know we don't worry about the brokerage anymore it's yep. you got it you know humming and you got your team yep you know, property management. So I think that's a key for everybody to, to really, you know, and, and which kind of leads into kind of ties it together, you know, slow to slow to hire, quick to fire. That's right. You know, we, we've been we've been interviewing a controller for over a month now, mm -hmm. you know, and just making sure, you know, the right, person. Know, right person. You know, we've we've all interviewed him multiple times. 
you know, is he the right person for our culture and where we're trying to go? Is he going to, you know, just help us fix a few things now or can he really lead us for the Some next few years? Add. You know, like, and that's got to, that's got to fit. Absolutely. It's one of mine running right into that is one of my notes for biggest lessons learned was trusting people and your help pays off. So like I'm delegating and delegating letting, letting go and letting go of something I have had a hard time with it just because of the nature of my business. I've always handled my business every pretty much every aspect yeah. of it. Well, now we're, we're scaling uh, the, the, the numbers so much that I can't physically do that. So trusting trusting your help and trusting the people pays off and that's shown with this just that example we just gave you um you know w with with our our operations supervisor so i was happy to have that well i think that that i can't even tell you how many podcasts i've listened over in the last three months that keep singing that same song of if you're ever going to scale if you're ever going to grow you, you got to let it go yeah trust your people little rhyme there but yeah, you're a poet and you didn't <laughs> poet know didn't, it. Poet didn't know it, that's right. <laughs> but, I mean, leveraging other people is the key to, to long-term success. Otherwise, you're going to run yourself ragged, and you're going to be limited of, of how far you can go. So if you've got all yeah. these duties on you, you know, and you can't start delegating those out. Be limited to your own capabilities. Right. Now, you might be a rock star, but you, you can't take your business to the levels that you probably want to all by yourself. You just but, can't do it. But, you know, I think where we kind of – a lesson that from several years ago is, you know, we were quick to just put somebody in place versus that slow to hire, quick to fire mm -hmm. mentality. Like, no, let's take our time. We'll, we'll, we'll limp along for a minute, but let's yeah. find the right person that's going to fit this, you know, this role that we want. And I think that's been key for it's us. Been key. I mean, not just in my department, but in others. I mean, I, I've seen other, you know, areas in Crest Corps develop and, uh, really blossom after some slow hiring processes that you put the right folks in there. Yeah. So, no, that's great. So trusting uh, trusting people, trusting your help, it pays off. That's one thing I'd, I picked up. Dan said he was uh, slow, to, or, yeah, <laughs> slow to hire, quick to fire. Um, another one for me is leveraging people in my time. I guess that kind of goes into trusting your help. I, I've, you know, one of the things you've always kind of preached to me and talked to me was, um, you know, how much is your time worth? Mm -hmm. and, and it really, you really started hammering home uh, to me on that when I started buying rental properties and it was, you know, well, I can say I had the same mindset as another investor. Well, I can save a little money doing this. I can save a little money doing that. But if I'm out fooling with that and dealing with that, I'm not concentrating on your core business, my core business. So uh, leveraging people and my time, you know, when you say leveraging people, sometimes that, that sounds you know, it sounds abusive almost, but you leverage what they're yeah, doing. They're, leverage what they're, their skill sets that's and, right. their, and their passions. I mean, that's got aligned as well. You don't want to just, just have somebody in there to do something. Again, it's hiring the right person right. that wants to be. You know, like that controller president we talked about, we want to make sure that he wants to grow into where he's over HR, IT, yeah. and accounting, not just one thing One thing on the accountant. We, we want to make sure he wants to have that growth. Mm. If he doesn't want to grow, that's fine but it's not the right person for where not we're for trying us. to go, right? That's right. But it might be somebody else might say, I just want you to be a controller. And that's it. That's it. And that's going to fit somebody that's that, that wants to just be a controller and doesn't want that additional responsibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, we're looking for multi part. I mean, There's, driven, <clears throat> multi-purpose type folks. No, I, I totally agree with you. We're live in the studio this morning talking to Dan Butler with Crush Bull Realty about biggest lessons learned in 2017. Um slow to hire quick to fire trusting people that you know pays off and it really has for me what's something else that, that you've learned in 2017 Dan? you know i think the last several books that i read and podcasts you know that that i've really tried to to hone in on is just eliminate eliminate limiting beliefs okay so let's unpack that i mean i think that's you know if we think we can't do something mm -hmm. then we can't you know what I mean? Like, if you constantly are worried about, no, I can't do this, or this is going to be really tough, 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 then it's going to stay tough. You know, or we can only grow the brokerage to uh, sell 20 houses. Yeah. Or versus, no, we want to sell 30. How are we going to do it? That's right. So that's a different mindset shift. Uh, it's brand new for me. I've never gone. So, we, you know, we, we came back with my second stint with Crest Corps, but I, I've. I've had a hard time with that. Not not recently, but at first I did. Yeah. Because I can only do ten a month because I'm gonna be swamped. Yeah. Not. Yeah. We want to do fifty 
well, let's back it back down and how are you going to get there? So if you want to do 50, well, can you do 50? Well, maybe not. I can do 30. So you got to find another person that can do 20 right. and so forth and just work your way all the way back down uh, to the core of it. And how many did you do last month? We did 28 in 28. December. 28. Wow. Yeah. So, and we've got about seven. I remember when you were a little kid, yeah. Yeah. five a month. Oh, damn, thanks, man. <laughs> 28, that's we closed that's actually, one and a half a day almost. Yeah, we actually closed out 28. We've got 17 for January. So it's. But when to your point, when we first started a year ago, you probably didn't think, man, can we really do 28? When we first started talking about this, that we, we talked about, Oh, let's do this and let's do that and let's have these goals and let's shoot for this and all that was great right and i was on board right. i mean i fully believed we could and would but in the back of your head you're like can you know can you really right i mean can you well, well yeah i mean if you see the vi believe the trusting your people and trust in the vision and trust in what you're seeing and we did and of course we're talking about it like it's over i mean it's, we're just scratching the surface so right. uh, th that's one of the Another good thing I've learned too is, you know, to bounce back from a great month like that. Well, you got, you know, you're only as good as your last month. So, right. so it's what are we doing now? But yeah, I, I, believing in the system and the process for that to hit such a great month like that, especially in December when everybody's, you know, vacationing and out. But our vendor partners, I just, I got to say this, our mm -hmm. vendor partners were a huge help. Uh, Will, Will Griffin Griffin's Jr. office, yep. yeah, Will Griffin's office has uh, really come through for us to to close that many when we're not their only client. And half um, the staff's probably on vacation. Half the staff's on vacation. <laughs> I know so they had the flu bug running around over Did there. Really? Yeah. So uh, if, if those guys are listening this morning, we certainly appreciate them for, uh, you know, coming through for us on a great September. But um, live in the studio this morning talking to Dan Butler um, about lessons that we learned in 2017. We're going to take a real quick break. Uh, we'll come back and, and, and dive a little bit further into this. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on FM 107.9 The Voice. Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. We'll be right back after this. Now, here's Mid-South Weather from News Channel 3's Severe Weather Center. Brought to you by the Crescent Club. Hosting the people and ideas that move Memphis forward for nearly 30 years. Poplar and I-240. Call for a free tour at 901-684-1010. Patchy fog to start your day. Good morning from the Severe Weather Center. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers. Visibility is greatly reduced this morning. Some extra time into that morning commute would be a great idea. Mostly cloudy, low 50s, light northeasterly winds throughout the afternoon. Patchy fog once again possible overnight, but temperatures will hold in the upper 40s. We'll warm into the low 60s with mostly cloudy skies on Wednesday. Remember, we're watching for rain on Thursday and snow chances for your Friday. The cars you're looking for at a price you can afford. CK Auto Sales on South 3rd in Memphis will help you finance your next car. Call 901-789-2507. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers on The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Now back to America in the Morning. Griffin, Cliff, Everton, and Mashmeyer PLLC is a full-service law firm with over 50 years of experience in the Memphis area. Real estate closings have continued to be the forefront of their law practice, which include residential, commercial, and development real estate, transactions, drafting and negotiation of real estate contracts, and leases, business information, preparation of wills, probate, and estate planning. Their firm represents a number of builders, developers, investors, and local lending institutions and is approved to close transactions for most local banks and mortgage companies. In addition, they offer title search, title examination services, and title insurance to several well-established title insurance companies in the Memphis area, as well as Tennessee and Mississippi. They strive to offer services in a prompt and timely fashion while advising and representing clients in a zealous and professional manner. Should their offered services be of need, please contact William N. Griffin Jr. or any of their attorneys at 901 901- 752-1133. They can also be found online at www.gcemlaw.com or on Facebook. 
Is it a good time to buy or refi? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Are interest rates going sky high soon? Hi, I'm Moody Calloway, the mortgage lady at iBank Mortgage. I tell my customers to ask questions, get answers. So join me every Monday morning at 8, and I will tell you what's going on in today's still changing mortgage world. Remember, most people think about mortgages a few times in their lives. I think about them every single day. Tune in Mondays at 8. Investors or buyers, if you're looking for the best customer service and most competitive rates on a home loan, come to Brighton Bank. They offer a quick approval process, fast closing, and they even finance 85% of the purchase in most cases. At Brighton Bank, they work with every kind of loan. BAFHA, USDA programs, traditional conventional, financing programs, long-term fixed financial, and bridge loans made easy. When it comes to home loans, they mean business. Call them today, 901-758-1740. Picture your dream house. For you, it might be a sprawling property with mature trees and a winding driveway. Or perhaps it's something more cozy and closer to the mall. Call Sierra Pacific Mortgage today. Tell us about your dream home. We want to make it a reality. Call Sierra Pacific Mortgage at 206-930-1801 or visit spmc.com for more information. NMLS ID 1788 Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, welcome back to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Um, I'm live in the studio with Dan Butler this morning. We're talking about biggest lessons learned in 2017. Uh, we're going to talk about some 2018 goals, and then we're going to want to hear from the listeners a little bit on uh, the Facebook page on what you want to hear from us in 2018. So when we left, we were talking about our biggest lessons learned in 2017. And, you know, we talked about trusting people, how it pays off, um, slow to hire, quick to fire, um, always look forward, never kind of concentrating on your, your backwards thought process or what's happened in the past. I talked about leveraging people, mm -hmm. uh, having them help me, you know, and really believing in that. And you got to um, let go. I, I have. It's funny I, to watch you. I, I love watching you grow, but that's been your one of your biggest challenges, I think, as a leader, is letting go. Yeah, because I don't, I don't. I've, and I think that's important for the listeners to hear because you've held on for how many years? I've been a licensed for, agent for this is seventeen. Seventeen years, mm -hmm. and you, and you're. This is something key for you in seventeen was letting go. Because I and never have. What does that mean for you now? What do you think about when you say letting go? What is that? It. it it's uh it's almost like a sigh like a relief <laughs> like it's almost like i've let because i've been it's almost like my work personality has been so pent up for so long mm -hmm. because in, i mean and in, in if you're a 1099 person whether you're a plumber an electrician or a uh, whatever you do a tree guy a real estate agent an insurance person, whatever you are um you're solely responsible for your own business and income and right. you know you, you're comfortable nature that you live in or you don't live in um so letting go this year this past year was really not even this past year the last six months mm. it, it was forced on me really because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do that yeah did I? well i mean it, the system the system what we're trying did, to create did, and, yeah. and, and the goals that we're trying to get to forced me to do that because i can't physically sell 28 houses close them keep my clients happy and sell again for the next month it just you just can't. So what was the scariest thing you let go? Uh, the transaction coordinating part of it. Like getting it from contract to actual to close. closing table. Because that's the Cause most that's important. You've always told me that's your most important. Sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's. If it doesn't close, you don't make money. Oh, hell, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> in my line of work. Show me you, the money. You can write a 500 contracts one right. month. Write them all you want to. Right. But if none of them close, it, it does, you're just spinning your wheels. So the very, the most important part to me was once we get a con something under contract and I've essentially sold the home, right? Getting it from that point through inspections or appraisals, uh, you know, the, the tenants transfer and ha I mean, there's just a whole thing that goes into it. Um, and Amber stepped up this year and really helped me release some of it. Yeah. And of course we've just hired Brooke and she's going to be able to, to really let me let go of it. But it, it's been a big challenge for me to let go. So that's the biggest thing for me was, just releasing and trusting other people and trusting the the you know the process so you, that we're so have you lost a deal from the process yet? No, not not one. Not one. Mm -mm. Not so that's that, good. Not for that was on us. 
Well, right. I mean, we've had some inspections that sure, but you can't control the inspection control that. or an appraisal issue or something. No. But we've lost. But a just you keeping up with the appraisal getting done, or inspection getting done, or the no. contract getting signed, or no, the no, attorney no. having what they need, or no. making sure the earnest money's there. All that. None of that have, is happening. None of that's happening. And if you remember, I, I, it, when we first started getting into these bigger numbers, the one thing I've always said was, I, I cannot that that I refuse to let go. Meaning the transaction. The transa- I yeah. can't I, because that is the most important part. And if it's just as important to me as selling the house, I mean, because if you let it go and you you're too lazy to get the inspections done on time and your buyer's upset and all this other stuff, it just doesn't work out. I'm just laughing. I'm thinking like Miyagi son, wax on, wax off. Like, <laughs> yeah. let go, my son. Yeah, you know, I had go. to. Well, and, or we weren't. Or we weren't going to grow. We weren't going to grow. Right. I was going to be able to continue to sell ten or twelve 10 or and make good money. Yeah. And that's fine. But that wasn't, you know, mon- the team. That's not what we're going. No, that's right. You want to come with us? That's well, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. That's true. I mean, it was. What am I going to do? What are what are the choices that I've got to make in right. order to do that? And that was one of them. So, well, and, and I think the the listeners should know, like. I mean, one of our goals is for you not to have to be the main sales guy. Like the process yep. and the system that we put in place right. can handle any lo- new lead we have, and, and yep. they're taken care of, and we move forward. And because we are building a system, That's it's right. not just Dean is over here selling houses. Correct. It's Crest Course system Crest that is run it's, that I, we all help set up. Well, it's, it's so an analogy of that would be like we we didn't want to be the Dan and Douglas show at Crest Core. Right. We've never wanted that. Right. Was it was it like that the first several years? Absolutely. Right. Because that's just how, you know, people re- related to Crestcore. But now it's it's getting its own brand, its own name, its own, you know, perception. Yeah. Um. And we've got to work hard to protect that. And yep. You know, and and so, us letting go and making that system is, has been key. Otherwise, you know, we would have stopped growing a long time ago. I think, and we don't have to dive into this because a lot of other yeah. people don't understand this, but I think Culture Index has been a, a, an enormous help when it comes to that. When it comes yeah, to for hiring. our business owners out there, should, they should look for some sort of system to compare what people's strengths and behaviors are, their their natural tendencies, to what you need that natural tendencies of that job to be. Do you need them to be detailed? Do you need to be driven or just hand them an SOP or st- standard operating procedure to yeah. get done? Those are two different or people. Or do you need them to have a machine gun in their hand and they're mowing everybody mowing everything down? And starting over and building. Right. I mean, I had lunch with a guy yesterday, a good friend of mine um, and, uh, in marketing, and he said he's taken these strength finder stuff and he's realized he he's not a creator of a, a, of a business or a system, but he's an optimizer. And that's right. the difference. And I was like, so, like, he, he wouldn't be good to go in and say, create this whole new marketing system for me for this business. Mm-hmm. But if I had an existing thing that's kind of running – he could take it to another level because shine he could just it up, shine right. it up really good and make it really optimal and really efficient. And I, I was proud of him for figuring that out for himself. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, 100%. that's huge because that's going to put him in the right spot to succeed personally, personally, and for whatever business he's involved with. So that's huge. I think if you're if you're an investor, you're a listener out there, and you're you're trying to kind of relate some of this to you, uh, you know, think about some of the trials and things that we've gone through that we're telling you about here on the air. I mean, we've. It wasn't perfect. 2017. Oh, we made wasn't so many. Perfect. So many mistakes. That's why we're. These are key learnings, right? That's we right. learned comes That's mistakes right. we made to get the key the, learnings. The headline is biggest lessons learned in 2017. Right. So, no, I'm I'm proud. It came to, from failures. That's yeah. right. All of them have. That's what. Yeah. All of them have. All right. Let's talk about just for a minute here. Let's talk about 2018 goals. I mean, this we're, we're going to kind of breeze through this because yeah. I don't think it's as important to our listeners, but it's important for them to know. Uh, how far ahead we're looking right. we're only going to talk about 2018 but we have quarterly meetings you and i do uh in, in douglas to uh talk about 19 20 and 21 i mean we're right. you Looking and i are out. already planning out 2020 and 2021 kind of right. what we're what we're looking to do right. where we want to be uh as individuals and as a team, team and, yep. and is where we're at so how big the team is how many transactions yeah how and, many markets we're working our way back Working you know, our way back. We have a right. goal uh, in 2020 and 2021 to sell a certain amount of homes in, uh, every single month, and we're working now back down to how do we get there. So, well, and I think that's a great. I, I want to stop you on that because I, we didn't used to do that. We we're always looking like, what are we doing this month? Yeah. Or and at the most, we look at what we're we doing for the rest of the year, kind of thing. Sure. But when you push yourself to like look three years out, five years out, and then build it backwards. It's a challenging process, and it makes you realize, you know, all the things you need to be working on now 
to even prepare for three years from now. Does that make sense? It does, but here's what it does. Yeah. I, want, I want to catch you. Here's what it does. Right. This is what it does for me. It makes if, – if you're thinking about 2020 and 21, mm-hmm. and, and I'll just say it, we, we want to sell 70 and 80 homes a month. Right. I'm not making any decisions now that won't help us get to that. Correct. You're thinking about I'm that thinking 70 or 80. In the back of my That's head, right. I am still – Will this person or this system – or this decision I'm making today for my team, how's that going to affect me in two or three years? Right. And if you're not, you're thinking about the here and now, yeah. and it might help you right now, but you might get down the road in six months and realize, oh my gosh, this is not the person, or this is not the system, or this is not the way we want to be doing this. So I think it is a... Well, and that brings into the, I mean, you know, one of our core values is long-term perspective, right? Yep. Looking at the long-term, not just today, not just this month. Partnerships. Partnerships and looking long-term, like... And that just helps you build. I always kind of I look at it as like a bigger like a tug of, tug of war rope, and it's way out there. And you're just pulling yourself to three years. And what do you got to do? Every time you pull, you're putting in a new system or a new yep. person, a new process, yeah. new automation, you know, whatever that is to get to that three year goal. That's right. And so that's kind of you know I know it's got it gets you fire in your belly. It gets fire in my it belly. Does. Like not I'm not again. Well, that goes back to what we learned. Like don't look about last month or last week or last year let's look at what three years out looks like and let's try to get there not dwell on the past so no i I, and i think if you're not thinking that way you're doing yourself and your family and your whole business and um uh, disservice by doing that let's talk about some of our goals yeah Uh, give me just a few of these that you're talking about you know i think for us i mean personally i want to read several more books a month you know i've probably been doing about one how many you want to read dane Oh, spit up his coffee. It's like, I don't read. Yeah, I don't. I sell. I'm, <laughs> so, not, I'm not a big right. reader. I, I'll listen. Maybe podcast. Maybe you should <laughs> yeah, put a podcast. Call. That's right. But no, just, you know, as I listen, I do, when I work out every morning, I listen to podcasts, which then leads to all these books. So Amazon's coming like once a week with a new book. And so yeah. I've got this pile now. And um, so my goal is just to get through two of them a month and enjoy them. And, you know, I'm tabbing each one as I'm reading through and then going back and what are those things that I can apply to my relationships, the business, yeah. you know, whatever it is that, that, that the book's about that, mm-hmm. that I can learn. And mm-hmm. so that's one of my big ones. What about you? I've created additional source of business and family revenue. So I, we're, as we talk about growing, I always look at different ways to diversify and have different things coming in. So uh, I'd like to open up another line of income for our business and another one for the family and mm-hmm. uh, develop my team further. I mean, we've, uh, we, we just had another addition, and I don't even mean develop as in by the numbers. I mean develop by the skill and by the mentality. Um, you know, just because I'm thinking that way, I, it's, I think it's my job to get everybody on my team to think the same way that I'm thinking that way. They're making those decisions based off of 2020, you know, mm-hmm. with Randall and Brooke and Amber and, you know, to have them thinking the same way that I'm thinking um, is vital to me because right. if they're not, then they're not, you know, they're not making the same kind of decisions I am. Um, I and then 360 houses, I mean, that's our, that's our 18 goal. So, I mean, that would be 30 a month. That's 30 a month. But I mean, consistent. that'd be, that'd be a great consistent number. Uh, but that's just some personal stuff, yeah. you know, and we share those. So everyone knows that we're not just, uh, you know, telling you to make goals. I mean, we, we legitimately have goals. You got a couple more you want to share? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, kind of making that shift from a pro, a reactive organization to proactive, and that's part of what we've been building with the team and the different systems and processes. Basically, being ahead of the issues, being ahead of a client's question, being ahead of a maintenance, you know, all that kind of I stuff. I think our clients and every client, not just ours, they're thirsty for that. Yeah, a proactive organization. A proactive that says... There's not that I can't think of anybody that's... Proactive. There isn't one. So we want to be proactive. We can change that mentality and and, and, and reach out to the person first before instead of reacting when they reach us. That's right. That's Even huge. though I think we do a good job reacting. I mean that that you know most of us do. It's right. you know it's what you're supposed to do. That's but right. if we can jump ahead of that, no, I agree. I love that one. And then just culture for me, I think that's one of the, one of the last pieces of the building block we're working on. Of just you know we're trying to find the right person, but then bring them in and and have a good onboarding and good ongoing training so that. They they understand our values, and one of my good one of my best friends in town kind of articulated this well for me. He's like, values are great, but you got to have the norms of behavior of how you're going to play those values out. Meaning, all right, say say long term partnerships is a is a is a uh, value. Mm-hmm. All right, 
how does that play out day to day? How are you, you know, how you communicate with each other so that, and I'll give you an example. Somebody wants a credit for a lawn cut because they didn't feel like it's fair, right. you know, like for 40 bucks. Right. Is that, you know, from a norms of behavior, do you argue that with the client, you know, just to your, to the sword? Or do you say, okay, sorry for the misunderstanding, you know, we're a long-term partnership. I mean, you saw an email I did this weekend yeah. saying, I used that phrase, didn't I, in the, yeah. in the email, like we're about yeah. long-term partnerships. Sorry, sir, well, if you don't it believe it's received. the right. It was just, he was, he was, I was. Very complimentary. Very complimentary. On, you know. Well, he didn't have to be. Yeah, and I think that uh, so that forty bucks is it really worth? You know, if you if yeah. your long term partnership is the key value, how, how your actions, what is the communication, how are you talking to your clients, your employees, your tenants, and all that kind of stuff. So that's right. I think that's that's huge. It is huge, guys. We're gonna take a real quick break. We're I've got Dan Butler in the studio, and we are talking about big, biggest lessons learned in 2017. We just gave you some goals for 2018. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about our local market, what we're seeing with the investing, uh, good good and bad. So uh, stay tuned. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on AM 990 Memphis. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. We'll be right back after this. Now, here's Mid-South weather from News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center. Brought to you by the Crescent Club. Hosting the people and ideas that move Memphis forward for nearly 30 years. Poplar and I-240. Call for a free tour at 901-684-1010. Patchy fog to start your day. Good morning from the Severe Weather Center. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers. Visibility is greatly reduced this morning. Some extra time into that morning commute would be a great idea. Mostly cloudy, low 50s, light northeasterly winds throughout the afternoon. Patchy fog once again possible overnight, but temperatures will hold in the upper 40s. We'll warm into the low 60s with mostly cloudy skies on Wednesday. Remember, we're watching for rain on Thursday and snow chances for your Friday. The cars you're looking for at a price you can afford. CK Auto Sales on South Third in Memphis will help you finance your next car. Call 901-789-2507. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers on The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Now back to America in the Morning. Investors or buyers, if you're looking for the best customer service and most competitive rates on a home loan, come to Brighton Bank. They offer a quick approval process, fast closing, and they even finance 85% of the purchase in most cases. At Brighton Bank, they work with every kind of loan. BAFHA, USDA programs, traditional conventional, financing programs, long-term fixed financial, and bridge loans made easy. When it comes to home loans, they mean business. Call them today, 901-758-1740. Griffin, Cliff, Everton, and Mashmeyer. PLLC is a full-service law firm with over 50 years of experience in the Memphis area. Real estate closings have continued to be the forefront of their law practice, which include residential, commercial, and development real estate transactions, drafting and negotiation of real estate contracts, and leases, business information, preparation of wills, probate, and estate planning. Their firm represents a number of builders, developers, investors, and local lending institutions, and is a Approved to close transaction for most local banks and mortgage companies. In addition, they offer title search, title examination services, and title insurance through several well-established title insurance companies in the Memphis area, as well as Tennessee and Mississippi. They strive to offer services in a prompt and timely fashion while advising and representing clients in a zealous and professional manner. Should their offered services be of need, please contact William N. Griffin Jr. or any of their attorneys at 901 521133. They can also be found online at www.gcemlaw.com or on Facebook. Is it a good time to buy or refi? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Are interest rates going sky high soon? Hi, I'm Ludie Calloway, the mortgage lady at iBank Mortgage. I tell my customers to ask questions, get answers. So join me every Monday morning at 8, and I will tell you what's going on in today's still-changing mortgage world. Remember, most people think about mortgages a few times in their lives. I think about them every single day. Tune in Mondays at 8. Picture your dream house. For you, it might be a sprawling property with mature trees and a winding driveway. Or perhaps it's something more cozy and closer to the mall. Call Sierra Pacific Mortgage today. Tell us about your dream home. We want to make it a reality. 
Call Sierra Pacific Mortgage at 206-930-1801 or visit spmc.com for more information. NMLS ID 1788 Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, welcome back to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Uh, now I am going to give you the investments of the week. So you guys got a pen, a recorder, <laughs> whatever you want. Pass out a little free money here. Um, 700 block of Homer Street and 38122. Uh, I've got a three-bedroom, two-bath. It's occupied for $750 a month. And the seller is wanting forty-seven thousand for this one. It's a great little property. I can't believe that and sold. That's got ceramic tile. I remember that house. Yeah, no, it's a great property. Oh. Um, Interesting. It we had it under contract and it fell through through financing. The mm. person was buying it couldn't couldn't get their financing straight. But three eight one two two, and then uh, for forty-seven thousand, occupied at seven fifty. And then I've got one more here in Whitehaven. Great property. Three thousand block of Pat Ann, three eight one one six. Uh, this is also a three bedroom, two bath, occupied at nine hundred and twenty five dollars a month for seventy nine five. That Whitehaven area is booming. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got. I mean, from an investment standpoint, oh, yeah. prices over there are really, really skyrocketing. So that's great. Seven hundred block of Homer Street, three eight one two two, forty seven thousand dollars, three bedroom, two bath, occupied at seven hundred and fifty dollars a month, and then the three thousand block of Pat Ann and three eight one one six. Seventy nine thousand five hundred. It's occupied at nine twenty five. So there's your investments of the week. If you got any questions about those? Um, they are on our website, CrestCoreRealty.com, www.CrestCoreRealty.com, or you can always email me, Dean at CrestCore.com. I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. So uh, this morning, guys, we're live in the studio. I've got Dan Butler in here, and we have been talking about um, biggest lessons learned in two thousand seventeen. Uh, we gave you some of those at the beginning of the show. We um, we gave you some goals. We want to make sure that you know that 2018, I mean, we're, we're not just preaching goals and preaching things to do, but we're, we're doing those ourselves. Let's talk about our market, Dan, and what we're seeing. What's, what are some of the things that you're seeing that, that you and I are both? It's so funny. We write down show notes before. You sent me yours first, and I literally had one thing to write down. We're, we're seeing almost the identical same things, That's um, funny. which is good. Yeah. yeah. But what are some of the things that you're seeing in our local market here that, that we can look forward to in 2018? Well, you know, I first wrote less available deals, but I think it's just, you know, harder to find deals. Yeah. So we just got to go after it, you know. So, again, a limiting belief, like, yeah. are there less deals? Maybe. We just got to go harder and find them. And find go the wider, ones that are there. You know, get, get the ones, every one of them that's there, you know. Well, if we got, you can, it's real easy to get comfortable on a, on a way you're, get, you're doing something. Right. Right. Because it's always worked. It's worked for the last worked. Wor- year, two years. So years. why rock that boat? That's you true. know, but if it's not coming and the flow's not, the deal flow's not coming like you want them to, you got to adjust and go out That's and right. get it. Um, you can't wait for it to come. No. So. I but learned that from a big producing agent in DeSoto County, you know, especially during the Christmas time, holiday time, and even in the downtime of the market. It's he like still you, got after it. He still got after it, and he yeah. still sold. So, I mean, it's the homes are still out there. We just yeah. got to get them. Uh, what else are you seeing? Higher prices. Yeah, we are certainly seeing different pricing points than what we've seen in the past uh, two or three years. Yeah, I mean it's not skyrocketing. I mean we're not. No. It's not getting to where you can't invest, but uh, we're definitely seeing an uptick in price points. Uh, I don't. I could blame it on several different things. Simple economics of supply and demand is one, but two, there's a lot. You know, there's probably ten times more wholesalers out there than there has ever been. Yeah. So those guys are cutting each other's throat pretty much at every house. <laughs> It is funny to see them argue on Facebook, though. I'll tell you, yeah, funny, who yeah. outbid me on this house over here? Oh, I did. No, it, it's great. Uh, I forgot. I saw that. <laughs> and you were eating your popcorn watching the show. Right? Oh, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those guys are out there grinding it out. I mean, you know, they're hustling just like we are. I'm doing yeah. the same thing they are, it's just on a on on a different scale. And, and I think that, I mean, you said it before we started. Like, there's there's more people still wanting to invest. I mean, we've I've still talked to three or four new people just the first week of January. I've talked to three or four already this month. Yeah, brand new people I've never talked to That's that right. found us on bigger pockets or found heard us here or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So the 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 flux, you know, what we're seeing in this year is just the continue continuation of seventeen as far as people's interest and yeah, you know, I think that that's not going to stop. I think people are just looking. 
they're uncertain with the the administration and what the stocks are going to do and yeah you know there's excess cash especially out west and up north those guys have cash that they just got to do something with because they can't invest in their own backyard so they got to put it somewhere what, what from a product standpoint what are you seeing what are people meaning what what are you getting from either new investors or current investors that they're looking for? Is it multifamily? Is it single family? Are we looking at yeah? That's a great question. I think commercial. I think I haven't seen much commercial, but there's definitely a big uptick in a multifamily. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't seen the the demand. You know, because we've had to kind of shift what were our capabilities to, you know, to be able to handle it. Right, the mm-hmm. what people are looking for, not just a. You know, a 20 unit apartment anymore. They're wanting a hundred. You know, I'm talking to a guy today with a 168 unit apartment. You know, and and so that kind of leads me into what what else I'm seeing is syndications. Mm-hmm. You know, and I didn't know much about syndications the last couple of years, but you know, basically where you know a leader is pulling together a pool of money. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're all putting in 20, 50, 100. That just depends on the syndication and how big the. Uh, complex or commercial building they want to buy like a fund almost almost like a fund yeah i mean they're 10 limited partners and they all put in say a hundred thousand a piece that's a million so now they can go buy a what is that a five million dollar complex yeah you can if i if i do that my math right for a 20 percent down yep they put the million down with 10 partners and then they go finance the the um 80 percent at a bank you better not have too many chiefs yeah I, i'm still learning that i think that there's, <laughs> there is definitely a leader for each one that kind of makes the final decisions, but they're all involved. I mean, you know, yeah, I've been a one that's got five people on a conference call, you know, and they're all asking questions and cause these are all headstrong people with cash flow right. and, and capital and, yep. um, but definitely, yeah, that uptick in multifamily. What, um, from a price to rent standpoint, you know, what are you seeing as far as ranges? Are you having more people wanting higher end stuff, lower end stuff? What, what are you, what are you seeing? You know, most people we're talking to, See what you think. I mean, most of mine are at minimum forty thousand, probably even a minimum of fifty, and going all the way up to a hundred. I don't see many people wanting above a hundred. What about you? I'm seeing less people want above a hundred and more people wanting above fifty. Yeah. So I mean, it used to be that thirty five to fifty was fine. Most of my investors now are wanting fifty to seventy five. Yeah. But I still get the Cowboys that want 25, 25 grand, 000. 30. Yeah. They see that 19% they see the, return. See the return. Yep. They cannot pull themselves away from it. Um, but but I, I I talked to a guy yesterday who, you know, he wanted some twenty five to thirty thousand dollars, six hundred to six fifty rentals, and I got I got some of those for you. You know, I think the key to that is that <laughs> my my latest I guess advice to that after learning a lot over the last several years is, man, let's go get you ten of them. Don't go buy two. Yeah, but go get ten of them or more, and then let's just watch it closely. And you're going to see there's going to be a couple that you just need to call out. You know what I mean? Like, and don't get emotional with it. Just watch the numbers and just be rid of it. Or get, get be rid, rid of, of it. it you know, if, it, if ten of them, I bet two are going to be quote ongoing dogs. Yeah, you know, just because of the neighborhood, the block, the structure, something is is driving that to not be consistent. So Memphis is notorious for blocks changing on a dime. Oh yeah. I mean, you can have you can have some investment houses on one street, literally pull out of that block, go to the next street over in a new block, and it's night and day difference. We'll just drive down Waring. Yeah, that's a perfect example. You know, if you start at Walnut Grove <laughs> and go north on Waring, you start at a million plus houses, and then by the time you end up, Waring turns into Well Station. So yeah. by the time you end up at the where it gets to the railroad track, you're at a twenty thousand dollar house. That's a perfect example of That's our nine hundred eighty thousand dollars. If you want a visual of the Memphis real estate market, start off on Waring, at either end. Hadn't thought about that. Don't and, worry about it. and drive down it, yep. and there is the Memphis real estate market. That'll sum it up. And, yeah, in five minutes. In five minutes. Take one street. one street, no, and exactly you'll see. Right. I haven't heard that. That's good. <laughs> go down Waring. And start at either end. Either end. Yeah. Start the lower. Start, start the, low, start low, the high. high. And just go walk, drive down the street. A million dollar swing in, <laughs> in a matter of, I don't know how many miles that is, three to four? I was going to say five miles. Five, maybe, yeah. I mean, you're going from 20 grand to just one street. In one street. That's funny. I hadn't thought about that's, that. That's Memphis real estate market. Um, 1% rule becoming the norm. You, you I, I'm not seeing that. I'm yeah. getting way too much uh, one and a half to one eighth. Those are, and what we mean by that is, uh, the 1% rule really is, you know, if it's an 800 rental, people are paying $80,000. That's turnkey pricing. So I'm not 
I'm not seeing just a ton of that, yeah. but you are. You're seeing more of that. I mean, I, I definitely see people more used to having that conversation of just I'm okay with a 1% rule. So in their minds, they're going to put 20% down, maybe 25 mm-hmm. and put it on a 30-year fixed Fannie Mae loan, and the cash flow will be good. And it's it's that hundred eighty thousand dollar hundred thousand dollar house yep. that rents for you know thousand bucks eleven hundred bucks, and you know and they can make the numbers work because it's a consistent product, you know you kind of know what you're getting. It's a brick, yeah. three two yeah. two car garage, you know mm-hmm. two income family, mm-hmm. so it's a, it's it's a much more stable situation. Um, so multifamily higher prices. I'm live in studio with Dan Butler. We're talking about uh, biggest lessons learned in 2017. We gave you some goals of ours. 2018 now we're kind of going over our local market and what we're seeing here uh prices are rising we've talked about that we've got less available deals but I, I i don't even know that it's really less available deals is there's just more people in it shuffling them around you yeah. know i just think there's more more dealers shuffling the cards around so true um more people wanting to invest we're, we're talking to new people every single day you know you and i both have talked to some new yeah. guys already um price to rent ranges and what we're seeing uh, and, and more syndications uh, tell people what you mean by that. Seeing more syndications, just the the people grouping together, like we talked about earlier with yeah. multifamily, just people um, pulling their money together to go to after more a funds. bigger, yeah, okay. just going after a bigger asset. You know, instead of having fifty houses all over the, you know, or one house at a time, that people are pulling together and buying one big asset, a two hundred unit apartment. Yeah, you know, so they have one place to go. One P or even one package of homes. One package of homes, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So. Um, all right, let's talk about real quick, kind of what you guys would like to hear. We want to know what you want to hear from us this year. Uh, as you have listened to the show, if you're a faithful listener, which we know that every person is, <laughs> right? I mean, every person listens every week. I know that. But what we want to what we want to know is what you want to hear from us. What What are some of the topics that you want? This is not a show to promote Dean and, and uh, Crestcore or Dan and Crestcore. I mean, you, you know, you know us from there. But what we'd like to hear is some feedback from you guys on topics that you want us to talk about. Mm. These are, you know, we have things in, in the next several weeks lined up. We've got topics that we can discuss and we can bring on here. But we'd like to hear from you. So go to our show's Facebook page, the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Comment on today's show. Uh, give us a few ideas of some topics that you want to hear uh, over the next few months, this first quarter. Uh, and, and we'll certainly put them on here. We aim to please here at the Memphis Real Estate Hour. So you guys let us know that. Uh, I've got two investments of the week that I gave out a little earlier. Um, those will be on our website, www.crestcorerealty.com. And uh, if you have any questions about today's show, you want to follow up with me about anything, you can reach me at 901-619-6170, or you can email me, which is actually the best and quickest way, dean at crestcore.com. So, Guys, appreciate you listening today. We'll be back next Tuesday at 8 a.m. for the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Have a great day, and we're gone.